Well, first of all, thank you for coming. I'm going to be talking about how you train a virtual mathematician. This is part of a larger story where robots are replacing humans. We're now in, by some estimates, the fourth industrial revolution. The first one was when we started powering machines with steam and water and such things. And then we built conveyor belts. And the third one was when we put robots more and more into our factories. And we're now in the, in the fourth industrial revolution, which is kind of a cyber revolution where we're replacing human minds with, with computers and machines. This raises all kinds of interesting issues, uh, like universal basic income, when humans will far outnumber the available jobs, what's best to do. Also some ethical issues. Uh, who should the self-driving car hit if there's a, a tree in the road and there's a rabbi on the right and a priest on the left? What's the car supposed to do and who gets to decide that? Should it be random or should you program something in, into, the, into the machine? But many believe that some jobs will still exclusively be human jobs. Well, maybe not. Poker players are being defeated by artificial intelligence. So they're taking over our games. We've taught AI to write AI. That's definitely a bad idea. Uh, <coughs> this was a recent development by, by Google. But what about the professors, for instance, at this university? Uh, are we even safe? What about what we do, teaching and research? Well, maybe we're not safe either. It's always a good idea to have a clock running when you have a short amount of time, but it's good to remember to start the clock. We'll see if we end on time or, or not. Uh, last year, there was a course being taught in Georgia Tech, and at the end, the students found out that their teaching assistant had been a machine all along. This was through the uh, Piazza system that many, many of you know here. And grading is more and more being taken over by uh, AI. I think we can all get behind less grading, so let's not worry about that. So maybe, maybe Skynet can do our, our teaching, but what about the research? Will we still need humans for research? So if anyone is safe, it should be pure mathematicians. They are considered to sit kind of at the top of the ivory tower, doing nothing useful and just sitting and thinking the whole day. Well, maybe not. Uh, decades ago, we stopped doing experiments on paper, <coughs> and the computers do all our experimentation. But what about uh, conjectures and theorems? Well, the way to make the computer do conjectures and theorems is kind of like the wrong way to bake. You maybe know the basic methods of baking. You know how to stir things and break an egg. And you have all the ingredients. But you have no recipe, so you just try everything. You like cut down some onion, and you stir that with some wheat, and you put that in the oven. Just try that. Maybe it works. If it doesn't, just try again with some other ingredients. So that's, that's a pretty horrible way to bake, and you're going to ruin your kitchen. But this is the right way to do math with a computer. Because the computer doesn't mind if it tries everything. It has to start over and over again. So that's what I'm going to try to convey here. We want to start with some kind of mathematical statement. It doesn't really matter what it says. This is about some objects called permutations. And a statement is something about how you can count them. So for example, we say if you have length n permutations, this is the counting formula. For example, if n is 10, this would say 10 squared, which is 100, times 9, 900 plus 1, so 901. And we want to be able to automatically conjecture this. So we create an approximation in terms of some binary string. And then we take our ingredients, which are somehow fundamental truths we can take for granted, and we try to combine them in every possible way. If we happen to get the approximation, of our goal, of our theorem, we have a conjecture, just by trial and error. 
Now, how's my time? No one knows. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Now, what do we don't want a conjecture? What do we want? A theorem with a proof. So we take the same statement and we graphically represent the structure of the objects in question. We get a nice picture like this. Essentially what's happening here, without going into any details at all, is we're teaching the computer tricks like either the object I'm looking at is like this or it's like that. So you start with a complicated picture, and you look at special cases, and you get branching in a tree-like manner like you see here. And if you get to a theorem that you can't prove, you pick up a new paper and you try to learn the tricks the human mathematician did, and you teach that to the computer, and it gets more and more powerful every day. So that's how you train a virtual mathematician to do your job for you. Uh, we've been doing this now for a while, and we've been collecting our data in, a, in an open website that some very nice undergraduates have been helping us with. Let's see, let's try Chrome. It works in Chrome, right, guys? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a, a mathematical object, uh, and we don't need to really know what it is. And we have a theoretical description in terms of this nice picture from which we can mine the thing we're after, which is uh, equations counting how many they are. And if you are ever bored, you can have endless fun here just by clicking and looking at random beautiful entries where the computer conjectures or proves something for us and gets the data in terms of these counting counting formulas. Uh, and that's it. We have time for one question. Short question. What amazing people wrote the website. <laughs> it, was, it was you <laughs> and three other people that didn't really do much. <clears throat>